Welcome to SoCaltech Interviews, where we talk with the entrepreneurs, investors, and others in Southern California's startup and technology community. Today, our interview is with Steve Hanvey, the CEO of Alakai, which just announced a hydrogen-powered air vehicle at an event in the L.A. area. Alakai's vehicle, the Sky, was designed at DesignWorks in Newbury Park. I'm Ben Quo, founder and editor of SoCaltech.com. How did you guys come up with this whole idea of, of a hydrogen-powered vehicle? Well, i got to give credit to Brian, who unfortunately is not here with us today. When he was looking at how do we solve the mobility problem, we started looking at electric drive with batteries, and we just couldn't quite get there. And I should say, at that time, I was just supporting Brian. He was doing all the heavy design work. And he ran thousands of iterations and saying, if I double the capability of the current state, where will I be? and I'll have a few more pounds of payload. So he backed away and said, what else can I do that will give us the payload that we had identified over the last 20 years with Bruce Holmes and Brian and myself working with different air taxi companies that we ran. And Brian did a lot of the data analysis. And he said, to get a 1,000 pound payload, which is basically four people in a pilot, right. to get a range of up to 400 miles, you need to have a different solution. And so he started looking at a hydrogen. It's been around, it was in the early space shuttles as an engine, you know. And so he said, that might be a solution. So he started inventorying the different hydrogen providers all over the country and then internationally. And it took us a while to come up with the right one. And we found one that understood aviation, meaning maneuverability as opposed to, to big trains and heavy right. weight and trucks and buses that ours was a different application. We needed a lighter weight version. And so we, that's what we've been doing. Interesting. Now, this is a pretty big project, I imagine. I mean, no one's ever done this kind of a vehicle before. Well, you know, did you think about, hey, this is really quite a, a task, and how did you decide, we're going to just go and do it? Well, we, if you listen to what Bruce Holmes said, Dr. Holmes, when we started with the Agate program, that's what was the gestation of this for all of us. And I tried with my company, with Sats Air, in, in 2005 with Cirruses. Bruce did it with the Dayjet company. Uh, Brian was supporting us technology-wise in both of those companies. We were working with NASA on doing some reports. So it, it, that's happened progressively. And finally, when Brian started working on this about 2012, on the physical design, we actually tried to do some things. He was trying to get some funding, small business funding. And people weren't, weren't interested in it because they saw the problems. And Brian saw the solutions. And the solution was the hydrogen ones. And so that's how that has evolved into this. It wasn't an epiphany one day, we're going to go out and do a mobile, a mobility solution, a personal one. The personal mobility part came with the gridlock in the 1990s that we saw getting worse and worse. How do you connect intermodal transportation to minimize door-to-door -door, um, time reduction? Stop and think about it. Time is one of those things we can't recharge. Right. We can't get more of it. So if we can use it more efficiently, and in our case, we want to do it cleanly. When we're sitting idle in our car, we're not doing anything except listening to the radio or getting irritated with traffic. And that's what all of us share that. I mean, you share it, we, we all do. And so that evolution of how do we take this so it's mass transportation, right. so everybody's using it. And the hydrogen became the enabler along with the technology of fiber optics, composite technology that has gotten lighter weight, different ways of constructing a vehicle with all these forms and yet do it at a cost that you can afford. Right. Now, uh, have you guys looked at the cost, uh, the, the funding requirements to do something? I imagine it must be hundreds of millions of dollars to take this to market. Uh, how are you guys handling that? Um, I can't really address our investment, but we have a single investor that has funded all the R&D and the FAA certification work, all our work to date. Brian, Brian uh, did it himself, company funded, and some of us were doing it pro bono originally but the major investment over the last year has come from an investor, and that investor has agreed for the planning for the production and the marketing for uh, 135 operations or fleet type operations. So uh, we might end up having other investment come in, but we have a, uh, 
we're very blessed to have that type of investor is, involved. Is that a private equity investor, institutional, or angel uh, investor? I, I can't say. Oh, okay, so you yeah. guys haven't talked about yeah. that at all. Yeah. Okay, uh, interesting. Now, um, uh, how long do you think it'll take to go through this process? I know, you know, people even just taking in a new plane to market is yeah. is really, really a long, long haul. Uh, what are you thinking? You, what are you uh, anticipating it'll take to take something like this to the market? Well, don't laugh at me, but no. I honestly think that we will be able to certify it based upon our discussions with the FA, based upon having a project plan that is in the process of being uh, approved with the FA uh, by the end of 2020. Now, why do I say that compared to other? vehicles, it's because it's simpler. There's less parts to certify, less moving parts. Uh, the, hydro, there's, the hydrogen cell doesn't have any moving parts in it, so we have to go through what's different to certify, and the FA doesn't have rules to apply to that. Um, the example I can use you from my, my past experience where I've done certification programs on airplanes and uh, rotorcraft is if it took you 2,000 hours, which is not an unusual number of flight hours just as a measure, and you typically fly about 20 hours a month. Right. And you let's say you put three vehicles in there, three aircraft, that 60 hours into 2,000 is over 30 months. That's your three year plus program plus the build up and the shutdown, it gets you three to five years. In our case, we've been talking with the FAA from day one. When, when we look at the regulations that we have to accommodate, the ones that we're developing jointly, we believe that the test program is about a third of the normal program. And so since we have a vehicle that doesn't have as many things to fail on it, uh, reliability very high, that we can do that with three vehicles at 20 hours a month. And we, we know we'll fly more vehicles than that um, in, in about a year. So just look at you know 60 hours a month, 12 months, that's 720 hours. A third of a normal program is that's what I believe we'll be able to do both based on our own experience, we've been doing a lot of, a lot of our teams been doing this right. a lot in the aircraft business, right. and we brought automotive as well in, but it's the simplicity that right. gives it me that, that comfort factor we can probably do that. Interesting, now how, how'd you guys end up working uh, with BMW Design Works out here? I mean, how, how did you? Uh, well, it's actually not with BMW, oh, okay, it's okay, with so Design Works. Design Works, okay, right. Uh, through um, our investor had a um, person that he had invested in another technology company, and that, that particular individual had been a creative designer at Apple and knew the Design Works folks had contacts down right. here. And she introduced us to a number of industrial design groups that could help us focus on the cabin before we focus on just the performance, right. on the engine and on the rotors. Right. We actually had more of that done than we did before we had the final rotor. So, so the design, a lot of that design work, uh, I asked because we cover Southern California, yes. and so it sounds like a lot of the design um, was, was done here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I spent the first design review preliminary was done one wall over from right. here. <laughs> and uh, it it's changed, but we went through, I would say, probably 25 iterations of different thoughts they had about, like uh, Holger Humphrey was saying, as we go on through looking at it, well, how do we do it a little differently? How do we make it so it's really a special uh, accommodation for the passenger, for the, for the comfort of the passengers? And we ended up with this design where we have kind of a cradle that isolates everything from the cabin itself. Right. So uh, I guess last question is, uh, what should we be watching for, from you next? Uh, what is, what's kind of the next step? I think our, our first flight is imminent. Um, we have some people we've been talking to about how we might uh, get some early start on uh, orders for what we're doing. I think those will be the next two steps. Uh, we'll continue to build our team and um, we'll, we look forward to telling everybody. We're, we're trying to only talk about what we've done, right. not what we're going to do. So I'm a little hesitant to answer that question, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that, that's an honest answer. Our, our, our flight test program, we have an imminent uh, flying of of the vehicle and um, I think once we fly we may reach agreement that we want to go public with some of the initial interest that we it's been very strong. Great, great. Well thank you very much. Uh, uh, my pleasure.